Greetings to you from Rivers of Living Water Cathedral, 604 Holland Street in Fremont, Ohio. Thank you for joining us, and may today's word be a blessing to you. Join me now as we hear from our own apostle, Dr. Robert L. Jones, who is sharing our message. Amen. Amen. Well, we have another good one on for you on on today out of God's Word. And the subject that we're going to be in on today is mindful, mindful of staying born again. Mindful. Don't forget it. Mindful that you, you've been changed. You, things happen in your life. Your walk, your talk, things are just mindful of staying, staying born again. Today's lesson is coming uh, from St. John, the third chapter verse number 3 and verses 6 and 7 and 2 Peter the first chapter verses 2 through 9 uh, Pastor Joyce is coming to share with you the scriptures that pertain to today's lesson St. John chapter 3 Beginning at verse 3, verse 6, and verse 7. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through the ninth verse. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that these ye might be partakers that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, mm -hmm. add to your faith Amen. virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patient godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Can we say amen? amen? Amen. Staying mindful or being mindful of being born again. Staying there. Never forget. Sometimes you can forget who you are and what's happened with you and to you 
But you have to keep your mind fresh every day. Yes, I am a born again child of God. Don't let me forget that, Brother Jones. Don't forget that. Live like it daily. Walk like it. Act like it. Rehearse it. Now we find in John, the uh, third chapter, Jesus is speaking unto John, uh, unto uh, uh, Nicodemus in John, and Nicodemus is a Pharisee, um, a ruler of the Jews, a great man of knowledge, mm -hmm. great understanding. He's a member of the Sanhedrin court. Now, that tells you he was just not a dummy. Nicodemus knew something. He was somebody. He had a knowledge of natural things, but no comprehension of spiritual things. Yet in his bewilderment, he knew within himself that Jesus had to have come from God. Because he said, Nobody can do what you do except God, Jehovah God, be with him. Yahweh God be with him. No, no one can do what you do. Yes, he had an understanding of natural things, Nicodemus did. But when it came down to spiritual things, he had no knowledge, no revelation. No understanding. So Jesus says to him, except a man is born again, he cannot understand it. Spiritual thing. Unless you are born again, you can't see it. It makes absolutely no sense. Faith doesn't make sense. Faith is faith. Hallelujah. And cannot be understood by your natural mind. Hallelujah. So it says, except a man be born again, he cannot see it. You ever been there? I don't quite see that. That, don't, that, that, that doesn't compute. I can't quite make that out. I can't quite understand that one. And you may have a great, great, great IQ, but IQ don't mean that you understand spiritual things. That's right. That's right. Mm. So, Jesus answers Nicodemus and says, except the man is born again, he cannot comprehend, he cannot understand the things of the kingdom of God. Jesus was saying to uh, Nicodemus, Hey, Nick, with all of your knowledge, with all of your natural understanding, it's impossible for you to have knowledge and insight and revelation concerning the kingdom of God except you be born again. Amen. That's it. Amen. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's so true. That's why Congress and your different politicians they may know a whole lot of things about the law, natural law, because a lot of them are attorneys. But they're stupid. They're ignorant yes. when it comes to understanding 
the things of God. That's right. Well, but right, yeah, listen, it's one thing to be able to quote the 23rd Psalm. And we often quote it. Yes. But do you truly know the God, the Lord of the 23rd Psalm? Can you say truly the Lord is? And live in that relationship of the Lord truly being your shepherd. Or do you just quote it at the beginning or an end of some service? So there's a lot of things that folk can quote and never once met God. Know nothing about God. So what Jesus was actually saying, except you're born again, you have no. No, no, no. It's impossible no to understand things according to the Spirit. Yes. Well, things about the kingdom of God makes no sense to your physical body and natural mind. Amen. It just makes no sense. Being born of the Spirit and being born of the flesh is completely two different areas of birth. Down in verse number 6 in St. John 3 and 6 Jesus says, Hey Nick, that which is born of flesh is flesh. So you, you understand that flesh stuff. Yes. I mean, you, you know that well. Yes. You've got great knowledge there. You know how to rule here and to rule there and give this judgment. That, that's another area of being born. You understand that? That which is born in flesh is flesh. But, and that which is born of the Spirit. Is spirit. Is spirit. So, Nick, marvel not that I say unto you to understand spiritual things. Sometimes you you say, I don't know why preachers going that way. Why this like pastor? He he, he, look, he seemed to be off this rock or this and well. If you become spiritual, then you can get some insight and some revelation of why pastor, evangelist, prophet may be going in this particular direction. It's a spiritual thing. It's spiritual insight, spiritual revelation, spiritual understanding. He says, so to understand the things of the kingdom, the things of God is an absolute must to be born again of the Spirit to understand things of, uh, in the Spirit. I didn't say be a church member because there's a whole lot of folk that's church members, but they're not truly born of the water of the Spirit. They're born of their church uh, rules and doctrines and bylaws and, and all, but never once had a real experience in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, now that's now that's put down. Because you hear me say it all the time. All you know is all you know. All you know. All you know. So, to have an understanding of the things of the Spirit, it comes through the new birth in the Spirit. Now, the reason for the coming of Jesus was for the reconnecting man, uh, mankind back to the original state of mankind. When he was first created in the image and in the likeness of man by God, God, create, uh, God created man in 
his, in God's image, in God's likeness. So Jesus came to reconnect us to our original created state. By not being reconnected to the original created state, we have no understanding of spiritual things. We can read about it. We can even have a library full of great uh, Bible books and commentaries and all, but still, no spiritual understanding, revelation, enlightenment, unless you are born again of the Spirit. In its original state, we were made in God's moral, righteousness, holy characteristic, an image of all of the norms of God. <laughs> there was a spiritual fellowship of harmony between God and man in the beginning of man. God made him that way to be in solid communication with the heavenlies. Yes. That was his man's original design. Man then lived and operated in the set norms of his creator. He knew nothing but God's ways of doing things. God set the norms for life and living. So man lived in the normal God's kind of life. Yes. That's how he lived. The normal God's kind of life. Yes. Wow. That's how we live. So, what an extraordinary kind of life to be living in the original creative state. All sometimes we can say about that is, wow. That's too high for me to understand that man was created in the likeness and image of God to live in harmony and unity with God whereby God would come down in the cool of the evenings and just walk and talk with his creation for eons that's how it happened. Amen. That was normal. It was normal. Yes. Yes. Very, very normal. You see, everything about God is normal. Everything. Everything. And the opposite of normal is what? Abnormal. Abnormal. So what's opposite of God? Satan. Opposite. Completely opposite. So, if everything about God is normal, everything about Satan is what? Abnormal. 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 Everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. I don't care how right it looks. I don't care how many people are doing it. If it is of Satan, it is abnormal. Yes. I don't care how many laws you pass to to, to okay drugs and smoking this and doing this and I don't know how many laws that time is, it's still abnormal. All right. It's not the norm of God. Mm. Except the man is born again. He can't see that. 
Well, the law says, the law says, and the law says. Well, the law says back in those days that slavery was right. But that was not the law of God. That was right in man's eye. So it was abnormal to make property out of anybody is abnormal. My God. So Adam and Eve begun as the, uh, the, a kind of God. Normal. Is that so? Yes. So they did. Everything that they did. Well, oh, this is normal. This is how God does it. Until they broke the law of God. When sin through disobedience happened by Adam and Eve, they became abnormal. From normal to abnormal. Through breaking the commandment of God by choosing to listen and follow the deception of Satan. Uh, Satan is the father of abnormal. Yes, he is. Yes, he the is. father of lies. Mm -hmm. That's who he is. Hmm. So when he broke, when they broke that, then they went into a fallen state. At that point, they no longer was in family relationship with God. No family re relationship existed between God and man at that point. But only through the paid ransom price of the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus could restored fellowship and relationship between God and man be made again. And even with, listen at this, and even with the accepted, restored relationship by the Father, listen at this, yet, according to Romans uh, 8 and 23, we are yet and still waiting for the adoption of the redemption of our bodies, which will come when our corruptible bodies put on the incorruptible body, as then we will be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at that time of the rapture. However, the eventual, the eventual, process of the incorruptible body, the eventual process of this incorruptible body begins, begins at the time of the new birth. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. That's when it begins. But we have to be mindful of that. Stay in mind, keep our minds that, well, I have the new birth. I can't do this. I can't go this way. I, I can't listen. I have, I live in the new birth. I'm born again. Amen. As Jesus was explaining to Nicodemus, you must, you must be. be born again to understand things about God. You won't understand God at all. And even <laughs> being born again, there's areas that are still like, wow. That's right. But eventually, 
You will even understand those other wild areas too if they're born again. Don't be deceived. There is a process of eventually receiving your incorruptible body and the process being, it begins at being born again. Being born again. If you then continue, listen, continue, be mindful of your new birth. Yes. Never forget. Be mindful of your new birth. It's so easy to slip into things and, you know, when I got saved, I used to didn't do that, but I found out it really don't take all that. I can do this and I can do that and I can. So now you're changing things that you once understood when you were first born. And now you spent a few years growing la legs and thinking you know how to walk. And, well, you know, I, I, I see, uh, well, that thing about the Holy Ghost see, well, that went out with the disciples, that went out with this, that, you know, all crazy, all crazy stuff like that, that tells me that uh, I don't really, you know, I think you had some type of an experience, but you did not wait on the complete birth. I'm reminded of that group of people that Paul ran into and they were born again people. And then Paul asked them, hey, uh, so you're believers too. Yes, yes, we're believers. Praise the Lord. We, we're believers. Well, have you received the Holy Ghost? Since you become a believer. Well, Holy Ghost, what's that? We haven't heard. If that's something that we ought to have, being a believer, we want that too. Amen. We don't want nothing left out of our new walk with Jesus Christ. Amen. But you see, the problem comes in. Where when people that's leading other people and you as a leader is, is not filled with the Holy Ghost, then you can give them all your doctrine and get a fellowship of hundreds and thousands of people that don't really believe in things about the scriptures that's received through understanding by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, who is the teacher. So, don't forget that you are born again. The Apostle Paul put it this way. To keep myself reminded that I am a born again child of God. To keep myself reminded of that. I die daily. daily. I don't allow my mind to try to outwit the things of the spirit and search for things that's going to satisfy the wants of the flesh anyway. It is, this is the way that you will be enabled to live the norm of God and uh, to live the norm of God, to walk in the obedience of the word and live by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ is that you die daily. daily. Let me close this lesson. I trust you are being blessed by it. Yes. Only by continued consciousness of a born again life in Christ Jesus, can you begin to comprehend and see the kingdom of God? So in conclusion, just keep being mindful of staying born again. Peter 
put, put it this way in, in, in Second Peter, it tells us, and you can read it for yourself. So Sister Jones has read all of those scriptures. And it tells us about our growth uh, of the true knowledge in Christ. It tells us about exceeding great and precious promises being partakers of this new birth or divine nature and escaping the corruption of the world. Verses 5 through 9 tells us the many components that we should add to our measure of faith. So we are neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of Jesus Christ so that we will never forget that we have been purged from our old sin. Amen. We are reminded if we we are reminded uh, that if we are mindful to add those mentioned things in uh, in the first chapter of, uh, of of Peter, if we re, if we are reminded, we remind ourselves to add that to our lives or add that to our faith, and to do them. Yes. We then shall never fail. Yes. Never. So just keep being mindful of staying born again. Amen. Again, 2 Peter 1 and 9 reminds us that if we fail to add to our faith these mentioned things uh, in the book of Peter, add to your faith, add to your faith <coughs> by adding. Simple math. You can always do simple math. Nothing complicated about simple math. In fact, when you, when you go to first grade or in preschool, they start with simple math, like one and one is two. Amen? Amen. Now, my wife may have said in her day, one and one is seven, but you know, she needed help. <laughs> but simple math is basic. Thank you. It's the basic thing. Add this to this. Add this to this. Add this to this. These are added ingredients to make an unfailing cake. Add this to this. And if you do it, you will never forget that you've been born again and heard from your old sins. Can we say amen? Amen. 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 So, stay very mindful. Stay mindful of the fact that you have been born again. Amen. If you've been enlightened or challenged to remain mindful of staying born again, then friend us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll get notified the next time that we post. We invite those who live in the Fremont, Ohio area to join us in person on Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. for a time of studying God's Word and building your own foundation in Him. Or come next Sunday at 10 a.m. for a time of family worship. We're located at 604 Howland Street in Fremont, Ohio. Intercessory prayer warriors faithfully take every request to the Lord. Send your request or financial blessing to us at Post Office Box 1323, Fremont, Ohio, 43420. You can also go to our website rolwohio.com where you can contact us through email 
You can link to any of our social media posts or you can link to our PayPal account. We look forward to hearing from you and remember, there, there is, is no God, God like our God, God nowhere. nowhere.